Welcome everybody, and it is my pleasure to introduce Christina Oldfather and Christina. All right, thank you, Brooke. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and have a seat if that's all right. Yes. So there's a chair here, I feel like I should sit in it. But we're all, we should be one judge. Right, perfect, perfect. Uh, so good morning everybody, my name is Christina Oldfather, I'm the Director of Innovation and Entrepreneurship at the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development, um, which I always say is a lot of words and we need to figure out how to shorten that up somehow. Um, but I want to start and just give you a little bit of background on what the partnership actually is and um, I know there's um, some confu I don't know how to say confusion, but it's like people think we're the chamber, we're LPED, we're kind of one and the same. So um, I'll dive into a little bit of what, what that actually is. So uh, the Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development um, was created, gosh, probably about 20 years ago now or so um, by an agreement between the city of Lincoln and the Chamber of Commerce to do economic development on behalf of the city. So we are essentially the economic development arm of the city, but we're not city government or you don't work for the city government. Um, we are our own entity, but we are underneath the umbrella of the chamber. So we're in the chamber office, we share employees with the chamber, obviously work closely on, on a lot of things, um, but we are separate um, for purposes of doing that economic de development work for the city of Lincoln. Um, and so, that economic development work is across a variety of areas. Uh, so we do your traditional business recruitment, business expansion, the kinds of things that you think about when you think about economic development. Um, we also do talent um, work. So thank you again for moving to Lincoln. <laughs> um, so we have someone that works specifically on that talent recruitment because I think as everybody's aware, you know, we've got a very low unemployment rate here in Lincoln and in Nebraska. We have lots of open positions, um, basically not enough bodies to fill the jobs. And so um, we have someone that works specifically with um, especially like our larger employers on figuring out how to fill those talent gaps, um, find people, potentially recruit people. Um, especially we found that if there's a tie back to Nebraska, um, that's a really big motivator for people to, to move back. Um, or the trailing spouse, that's always, that's always another good one. Um, spouse. Yes. <laughs> In a very good way, in a very good way. Of course. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's been a kind of a newer thing um, that, we, that we've worked on um, within probably the last five years. And then we also have a person that works specifically on workforce development. So um, I know Brian Seck was here a, a couple of weeks ago, and, and he was most recently in that role, and Allison Hatch um, is now uh, working for us in that role, but really figuring out how you connect people to these full-time career opportunities and then you know a win-win situation because you're you're giving people a great career opportunity you're also helping the employers fill jobs um, that need to be filled um, and then my area is entrepreneurship and innovation so um, we I look at my role as kind of two separate buckets and they both fit under the idea of creating the infrastructure in Lincoln to help entrepreneurs be successful. Um, one side of that is really focused on um, kind of direct services to entrepreneurs. So about three years ago, I created the Launch LNK program. Um, it's an early stage uh, startup grant program. We give startups $25,000. Um, we do five a year. We do focus primarily on companies that are working on what I call non-traditional business models. Um, so like scalable tech or tech enabled, um, doesn't necessarily have to be a software company, but someone that's reaching customers like outside of Lincoln um, in some form or fashion. And so we've done that now, like I said, for the last three years. Um, we've, we've seen some good results from it. We initially did start it as a program that would not only help entrepreneurs here in our community, but potentially recruit entrepreneurs from other communities. And I think we've seen, you know, as we learn and iterate, as you know, um, entrepreneurial-minded people do, 
um, the, the biggest bang for our buck has really been making those investments in our community. Um, and those are where we've really seen the best results. And that has definitely, um, you know, seeing those outcomes has resulted in that really being the focus um, of helping people get started and kind of being that first in capital. Um, so you kind of look at the landscape of investment in, in startup companies that first in like pre-seed money really is, is a place that's just really hard. You know, there's not a, not a, not a lot of angels writing those checks. Um, if you don't have the friends and family around, you know, you're kind of you're kind of stuck. So um, we've seen that be a really great way to help people get started and give them some runway. Um, Twenty-five thousand was also kind of a magic number because that, at least at the time when we created the program, it was the uh, required match for a full prototype grant from the Business Innovation Act. Uh, so several of our companies have been able to utilize. Uh, the prototype grant program and leverage our dollars um, as that match. Um, because that's also, when you look at the state, the Business Innovation Act, I don't know how familiar you are with that, but you know they do grants for prototypes um, actually up to $150,000 now um, that basically is strictly for development. There's also like research and development grants and different things, but that's really been instrumental in kind of creating this environment um, of people that are you know kind of willing to take that risk and and try things. So, being able to leverage more of that in our community through the Launch LNK program has been has been really impactful. Um, the other thing that we do is a little bit smaller scale, but um, we call it the Founders Fund, and essentially it's. $1,000 um, for an early stage startup, um, maybe even just at the idea stage, to help them do basically anything that will move their business forward in like the validation process. So we don't generally help people like form an LLC or you know some of those technical things, but if it's needing to get access to research or pay for a marketing video or we've even paid for someone to fly out and meet an investor, um, it's just very flexible. Um, which is another thing the state dollars are not, <laughs> um, and just you know helps people get kind of get to that next, hopefully get to that next level. Um, and even if that next level is realizing that this idea isn't going to work, you know that's still that's still a success um, in our book. So the other kind of direct thing that we do that's a direct service to founders is um, the End Motion Accelerator. Uh, so we are. Um, one of the investors into um, that program, but that was actually started in 2012 by a partnership between LPED, um, which is the short for Lincoln Partnership for Economic Development, <laughs> um, LPED and the university uh, to create this accelerator program. And we've evolved it over the years um, and grown it to include now $100,000 investments in a partnership with uh, Generator, which is a nationally ranked accelerator out of Madison, Wisconsin. So they actually run the programming for us, which is fantastic. And um, Scott Henderson is our managing director there now that works uh, for Generator. Um, but the program has also evolved over the years. So, you know, when you start, when we started, it was a $25,000 investment, and you came in with your business idea already formed and, you know, hopefully validated it to a certain extent. And then you went through this program for 12 weeks to grow and move your business forward as fast as you possibly could. Uh, you know, kind of fast forward to 2018, we were seeing just in the landscape of the accelerator world. $25,000 wasn't very competitive, especially for an investment in taking a stake in someone's company. Um, I mean, it may have been an accurate valuation for the stage companies are at, but you're competing with tech stars and you know all these places that are doing these bigger investments. And the other issue is, again, when you look at the landscape of capital in Lincoln and Nebraska, Midwest in general, um, you are kind of giving these these founders this initial infusion of cash and then 
you almost push them off the cliff at the end and say, best of luck to you. <laughs> yes, good luck. Let us know how it goes. Um, but I mean, there's just no like kind of next step for, okay, where's that next round coming from? And um, you know, how can we support founders when they are coming out of those programs? So this partnership with Generator um, really made a lot of sense because it now, again, gives the companies $100,000, um, which is a lot, a significant amount of runway, especially here. And um, the format of the program has also changed. So instead of a founder coming in and they've got their business and they've got their idea, we look for talented, smart people that want to start a business. And then the very first four weeks of the program is all ideation. Um, so they come up with four different ideas, pitch one a week, and then settle on one idea. And if the founder likes the idea and, and Motion likes the idea, they move forward with that investment um, in building out the company. So we're kind of in the middle of running that second cohort um, under that new um, new format for the program. And I think it's just really been great to see, you know, obviously as our ecosystem changes, your programming has to change. You have to be able to make sure you're still meeting the needs of the founders and the community. And um, this has been really impactful because especially like a lot of times the hardest part about starting a company is really finding that problem to solve. Um, and so you've got this team of people from Generator, from InMotion, and a lot of our corporations here in town that are helping to actually create these um, industry, like come up with these ideas and what, what are actual real industry problems that they're struggling with. So it's you're, you're off to a good start. Um, the I guess the final thing, that I'll talk about that we do that's more like direct support to founders is what we call the Jumpstart Challenge, which you may have seen some, um, hopefully you've seen some promotion about that here recently. Uh, but annually we hold a reverse pitch and it's very similar to kind of that format within Motion um, where a company comes up with an industry challenge, they present it to a room of really smart people and then they have the opportunity to come back and pitch that solution to the company. And if the company likes it, um, they get to uh, work with that founder to build the company out. So it's a pairs entrepreneurs with corporate challenges and industry problems and then creates opportunity for that founder to build something. Um, we've had a couple of really successful uh, companies come out of them. One of them is Noble Health, um, which is down in the Haymarket, and they worked with Bryan Hospital on um, a challenge around nursing rounds. Um, and they have, I think, around 20 or 25 employees and continuing to grow. And then another one um, was Live By. You may have seen recently they had a $9 million exit. Um, and they're in um, real estate tech and worked with home services to come up with with their solution. So we hope to you know, continue to have some successful um, companies roll out of this process. This year we have Allo as one of our companies. So they've put out a fiber network challenge. Basically, we have, we're a gigabit city now. Lincoln has this fiber infrastructure. So what can you build on it? It's kind of similar to, OK, if you don't have the road, you don't know what you can drive on it. But now we have the road, so what what can you drive on it? And so we are um, hoping to hear a variety of, of solutions. The, some of the prompts were around healthcare or gaming or things where you know the, the difference in the fiber network is that the upload speed is so fast. Um, so if upload speed is not a, a barrier, what kinds of things can you do? The other challenge um, that we'll be hearing, and actually those pitches are tonight, so if you're interested, anybody can come out and hear um, the pitches. It's always a good time to hear all the ideas that everybody has come up with. Um, but that's tonight at 5.30 at um, Allo and the Mill Telegraph District. So please feel free to come out for that. Um, the other challenge that the founders will be presenting towards tonight is from the University of Nebraska Athletic Department. You may have heard of a little thing called name image likeness, um, where these student athletes can now make a lot of money off of, off of, their, um, off of themselves, essentially. So um, the challenge that the university put out was that these student athletes, especially you know, across all the different sports, their day is programmed from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and they also have never 
worked with contracts and, and all these things that are going to come up with successfully making a deal and really managing a business. So they're interested in seeing what things people can come up with to help these student athletes navigate this process. Um, the other interesting thing that they threw out there was um, fan engagement. So across the board, people are less likely to come in person to a game, you know, they're on TV or whatever it is. Um, so, so they're interested in ideas and how you kind of get that fan engagement back in the stadium, um, you know, from, from a fan perspective, but also, you know, for all of these programs, it's also a revenue um, issue. So we will be having, um, I think we've got five for each uh, that will be coming back tonight to, to pitch some solutions. And so then the cool thing is, Whoever wins, they get to work with either Allo or the university as their partner, uh, opening doors, a potential beta tester, and hopefully as a first customer. Um, so those are some of the things that we do. I really like to look at, you know, where are the gaps in the community, um, especially as it continues to change and evolve. Um, I think in the very beginning we saw. Um, a lot of pent up demand like when the accelerator first started and there weren't a lot of programs and um, so you saw kind of this large group of people like wanting to try things and people writing checks and you know that you kind of have the ebb and the flow um, so you know as we see those changes we try to respond um, and and do what we need to do to to continue to create that infrastructure to help people be successful the other side of it, so that's kind of the direct support to entrepreneurs. The other side is really about community building. So that community building piece, like bringing people together and being here today um, is very, very important for those natural collisions because you, know, you don't know what you don't know, you don't know who you don't know, you don't know what they know that you might need to know. So you know, putting yourself into positions to have those collisions with people is extremely important um, as a founder. So. One of the things that we've done to try to help um, create more opportunities for those collisions is a, a digital platform called Startup LNK. So it's a website, it's a newsletter, it's social media, but really just the purpose is to amplify and elevate all of the things that are going on in the community around entrepreneurship um, and helping people figure out how they can get plugged in um, and get started. Because I think we think about it a lot as you know, if you can just figure out one way into that pipeline, you know, if you talk to me, if you talk to Brooke, if you talk to whoever, you know, they'll be like, oh, well, you should talk to this person. And then if you just find that entry point, they'll start kind of getting, you know, pushed around like a, paint, like a, you know, like a ball in a pinball machine and eventually, you know, find a lot of things that you need and the people that you need to talk to. So that's one way in which we do that. Um, the other thing is just, hosting events and trying to get um, you know opportunities for people to come together um, in in real life especially now you know that we're past yeah I, I mean kind of past I guess <laughs> sort of past um, some of the, the height of the pandemic I guess so um, one million cups is an is an example of that that's an event that um, I help organize we hold weekly um, and we actually move it around every month. So like this month it's out at the Combine at Innovation Campus, which is a um, ag accelerator um, that's part of Invest Nebraska. So I, I also we also find as we host it in different places, we host it at Turbine Flats a month, we host it at um, the barnyard and the hay market and, and just try to take it to different places where it's good for people to be able to easily pop in from their office um, and, and if we can't get people to travel across town to us we'll travel to them <laughs> um, because I do think that's another thing we've seen in this ecosystem building aspect is that as we've evolved over the last 10 years there used to be one or two things and so everybody would show up to those one or two things and now you know you've got specific meetups for developers you've got one million cups you've got um, just kind of more niche things that are happening and so people pick and choose what they're going to go to so it's become harder and harder to get that mashup of all the different perspectives and people and really having a lot of collisions so that's the other thing we, we strive to do is to figure out how we can continue to make more of those things happen 
Uh, so that's kind of the high level of, of the entrepreneurship and innovation arm of LPED. <laughs> I'm happy to take any questions you have. I hate when that happens. It'll come to me at 3 o'clock. OK, yes. Hey, by the way. <laughs> Having been involved with the chamber on many levels over the last 25 years, uh, there was a point when LPED was really focused on attracting businesses and communities from outside. Where does that stand today? I know we are a shortage of manpower, and you people call it. You know, we have attracted more people into the community. But have we lost sight of the fact that keep hearing about where the Silicon Prairie is. Lincoln's gone fiber and we've done that. Is LPED a part of that or is that a, that's my first question. Second question, how does L LPED interact with Innovation Campus? And is there some crossovers there? Could you share some examples? Yes, definitely. So um, so the first question, yes, we are we are definitely part of that Silicon Prairie. I mean, I think that's the other thing that we are striving for and a lot of other organizations are striving for is how we can be better connected as a region, um, as that Silicon Prairie. Um, I think we all know we don't each have all the things we need to be successful. Um, and so the more that we can put together all the things that we're doing to, you know, raise awareness, provide resources, um, the more successful everybody's going to be. So um, the Gigabit City is something we definitely promote. That is, um, Allo um, is primarily the one. I mean, I think Windstream also has a Gigabit uh, infrastructure here in Lincoln, um, but that is something that's, uh, <laughs> Sorry. yeah, no worries. Um, I say I know Allo's not the only one, uh, but they but they are certainly, you know, at the forefront of that. Yes, very very much so, and they're very supportive of, you know, the entrepreneurial community and, and figuring out how they can really serve the communities that they're in with that gigabit network. So that was one of the reasons we partnered with them on this Jumpstart Challenge because um, they were incredibly interested and and open to being able to to come up with some of these ideas. Um, we, we're definitely still in the business recruitment uh, game as well. I think we've just diversified our, our portfolio over the years. Yeah, um, and Innovation Campus specifically, um, we work with them on, on both of those fronts. Uh, so, you know, from a, a business recruitment perspective, you know, they've got buildings to fill. You know, they've been a really great partner with us on, on you know, if you've got company visits and people looking for space and, and all of that, and it's, you know, a great attraction um, as a, a part of the Lincoln community. Um, but then also on the startup side of things, you know, they've got co-working space, they've got the combine out there, they've got wet lab space for startups. Um, and so I work really closely like with Kate Engel um, out there on, on a lot of things um, startup related, um, including Startup Week, which is another thing I didn't mention that will be happening at the end of this month. Um, so working across to just create that community. I was wondering about Startup Week, because a few years back I was fortunate to be part of the juries of some of those startups, and they were fun to do. <laughs> Yes, we are. We are, Startup Week is coming back. So we did it all virtual last year um, because of the pandemic, obviously. And like I was talking to Brooke earlier, it's like there's the pros and cons of that because you know we we did hear specific feedback that people said I would not have been able to attend any of this if it hadn't been on Zoom because I'm working or I'm this or I'm that. Um, but you just miss out on that those collisions and having those organic conversations. So we're doing a little bit of a hybrid this year. Some events will be both. Um, but everything will be in person, um, just giving people an opportunity to more really just to gather. I think we were talking about this earlier too. I think we found that people coming out of the pandemic don't seem as interested in attending like a workshop or an educational thing. They just want to talk to people. <laughs> so if you give them that opportunity, um, it seems like they'll show up. So we're going to try to make that uh, one of our focuses of Startup Week this year. But yes, the week of October 25th, um, if you Google Lincoln Startup Week, it, the website should pop up. I think it's lincoln.startupweek.co. I mean, so yeah, so you mentioned the Startup Week. You know, there's that uh, uh, you know 
various meetups. There is, you know, this, this other event tonight. I mean, are these like organized someplace on your website or? Yes. So if you go to startuplnk.com, there's a calendar, um, and we curate that content. So I, I'll say I think one thing we learned early on too is that we thought, oh well, we'll put this calendar up and we'll just let people post their own stuff. Well, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so we make sure to curate that content and and. Everything that we know about that's going on and we search, um, we try to make it the best one-stop place for all of the entrepreneurial activity that's happening um, here in Lincoln, sometimes Omaha, virtually, um, whatever we think will be of interest. There's been a rumor going around about a Google facility. Do you have any insights on that? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, it has been around for a while. Yeah, well, you know, and I think the interesting thing, and the, the business recruitment is, you know, obviously not my focus, so I'm speaking really broadly here of just what I've what I'm aware of, but um, interestingly enough, it seemed like the projects side of things actually picked up during the pandemic, which we would not have actually expected. Um, but there was still a lot of, of those projects coming in and company visits. And um, so, I, and I don't really have a causation for that. Um, it just kind of, was a strange thing, but <laughs> um, but you know, in, as you were talking earlier too, John, like those projects are certainly things that we're we're still pursuing, but also knowing that we do need that talent and we have people working on that side of things too, because there's so many factors that influence all of that that comes into convergence that are some things we have control over and some things we don't. Like you know, one of the other issues is housing. So if we're going to bring these people in. Where are they going to live? Because you know the housing market is very tight right now. Um, there's a lot of apartments going up, but um, you know ultimately it's it's still kind of tight um, on the the housing supply. So you know that's another factor in the fact that we need more people, and then you know we obviously want good jobs coming in too from some of these corporations. So it's um, it's a lot of a balancing act. Where does LPID, I'm sorry. Let's see if there's other <laughs> Go ahead. Lancaster City just put on its 2050 conference plan, which says by 2050 there should be 48, 50,000 more people in the marketplace. How does that integrate into your thinking and how your LPEP's thinking in terms of growth and attracting corporate? Now, the healthcare is one of the big attractors for people coming in, and I them as the university is and as other colleges. So where does that whole piece of the puzzle fit in in terms of your forward thinking and terms of growing the community from a business perspective? Because I think that they got to go hand in hand. It's critical. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, we had you know representation from LPED on that that planning committee, um, and that's something that we've looked at as you know even before all that came out is you know our goal ultimately you know when you you create these big audacious goals it's like what do you want to you know what does the perfect world look like in you know 10 years or whatever and one of those really is like that Lincoln is um, you know population increased by a hundred thousand or, or you know some really big thing and so then that does filter down into everything that we do with um, you know how are we working on talent and recruitment and retention of students and um, just you're exactly right like it it affects basically everything we do in thinking about how we um, continue to evolve our programming and um, how we how we approach that I still have a passion for what the work environment's going to look like because that's what I did in the past few years is, uh, Deanne Winger I think you know Deanne is, is president of Alabama Business Solution oversees Alabama. oh yes oversees Alabama. She just did a paper recently about what does the collaborative IE work environment look like. She just did a post event. 
and I think that has to affect, do you have to attract as many or more employees, or can it be a collaborative environment where people can live in Beatrice or Waterloo or outside of Lincoln? You have to be part of Lincoln community in terms of business and growth. Yeah. To me, that's critical in how you sell Lincoln, if you will. Right. So no. Sell our workforce. It isn't just a population of that's, yeah, that's very true. And, and I think that's something we're still seeing how exactly that's going to shake out. Um, because, you know, a lot of companies sent their entire workforce home over the course of the pandemic. And some of our large corporations said it worked really well for them and they saw no decrease in productivity. And so, yeah, right, an increase because everybody's working all the time. <laughs> so you can't get away from it. Um, and you know, and we heard from a couple. I, th I think the majority were Rick in that that boat, and like now looking at hybrid models, and they're still kind of figuring that's out what that looks like. Yeah. That seems to be the direction that that's going because you know, the gal that I worked with is in Chicago, and their whole model. The you know, Hampton has three buildings going on over by Rock and Joe's right now. Back in the and it's going to be a whole different kind of collaborative environment. Yeah. Well, and I think you don't have as many or more people, but you don't need as much office space. Right. Yes. Yeah, so definitely um, transformational for what the real estate uh, market looks like too. And and we've heard from some of our companies that, you know, they're kind of leaving it up to employees of like, where do you do your best deep work? Go do it there. And when you want to collaborate you come in. And so that also, I think, impacts how the space is set up when you come in and um, the exact the square footage and, and all kinds of things that are just very different um, that'll, I think, we'll continue to see some transition. The other interesting thing is, you know, there's a lot of focus on recruitment and getting people here. And certainly there's probably still a majority of jobs that it's like, okay, well, we still need people to live here in Lincoln or surrounding areas and, and physically come to work. But we've also seen, on the other hand, companies hiring people that live in other states and finding that talent that they need, um, and vice versa, people getting poached <laughs> by other companies. And they still live here, which is good, um, but they're, they're working for companies not in Nebraska. And so figuring out how that translates into you know, this talent strategy. Yes, yes. Yeah, and so that's, you know, and some of those companies are, though, they're paying less if you work different places, but also it goes farther here. And so how those decisions come into play from the employee perspective is, you know, something that I think we really need to get a handle on. Um, and then, you know, vice versa from the employer side of things. So it's, I, I don't think that we're finished seeing how this is going to transition, um, but it's certainly, you know, giving us a lot of, a lot of data points. <laughs> um, uh, wondering if you could comment. So, this, uh, so okay, so I'm the trailing spouse. Uh, maybe, <laughs> I like that. I've never heard of it before. So, uh, 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 so uh, something I'm running into, which is probably very common to uh, others in the same situation, is in terms of um, you know the, the, the place where I, let's see, I, I guess the level of specialization that I have, uh, I haven't been able to find a um, uh, a home for it local here um, that uh, you know uh, I'm maybe more narrow and deep, um, uh, uh, which meshes very well to the organization that I had been at um, before. And uh, you know, there's cancer research going on here, but uh, it's nowhere near the scale. And so the, the appropriate, you know, the, the sort of person we're looking for is maybe more broader and, and more shallow. That, that's the appropriate shape for it. Um, uh, and, I'm sure this is also true in many other fields. I mean, like, you know, if you're in Madison Avenue or something like that, I mean, there's, there's one place where that, you know, that level of advertising happens, and you're not going to find that uh, well in other places. Um, is there, do you, have other, do you have thoughts around how this kind of thing has, has been addressed, or how, how you've seen people approach this kind of thing? Yeah, so 
I think, I mean, that's kind of a, a specific thing. I mean, I think there's no shortage of people looking for software um, engineers, I mean, certainly. Make a website. There's other things that, you know, but lots of other people can make websites too. There's certain things that I can do that nobody else knows how to do. Yeah. Um, I think w we've seen some uh, partnerships across a variety of organizations in, in ways to try to make sure we're finding homes for the trailing spouses, <laughs> um, you know, but I think, you know, the other reality of that is, is sometimes the exact thing maybe doesn't e exist or exist at that time, and, and that's just kind of the nature of the way that the job market is. Um, but I mean, if there's something like, obviously, like the, the university, especially the UNO, and, and some of the places that are doing more of that research, I mean, specifically, if, if you haven't made connections there, you yeah, know, I, them, okay, getting great, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it, it, it ends up being kind of like that concierge type service, because each one is a little different, um, and it's, and it's hard to kind of scale that, um, but I guess I will, I would say specifically, I don't know that I've, I've seen, um, someone not be able to find a match for what they do. Or like on that deep level, I I don't know that I've seen that yet or until now. <laughs> Is Allison's fund still going? Oh yeah. Um, that's a good question. I've Diane says yes. I say I've directed. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Center for Rural Affairs is taking. That's right. Okay. That's, that's right. That's still right. Going on. Um, yes, yeah, so that, and that's something that we direct people towards. I mean, I guess that's the other thing I'll, I can maybe wrap up with if we're about out of time. Um, the other thing we really strive to do is even though we focus really on scalable tech or tech enabled companies and a lot of the things we do, you know, we obviously get people that get into that funnel that maybe aren't a fit for our program, but we know that there are other things out there that are a fit for them. And so making sure we are aware of those and that we have those on the Startup LNK sites and that we can be that repository of information and one of the many connectors in this community to get people to the right place to um, find the right help. Does that encourage this philanthropy? Yes, yes. Well, and you know, honestly, we, when we look at like our in motion, for example, um, you know that's all investment. Um, the the really great thing about how that's set up right now is that Generator is our partner, so they have this fund that is um, across all of their companies. So they have accelerators all across the Midwest. They've got one in Toronto. They've got one on the West Coast. So these, when you invest in Generator's fund you invest in every company that they invest in across their portfolio. But you also guarantee that basically your money comes back here to invest in companies right here in Lincoln. So you get, as an investor, the best of both worlds. You get to diversify your portfolio. You also get to ensure that your community is, is getting those dollars. Um, and I think we've really heard a lot of feedback that that the motivation for that though still is primarily more philanthropic. Um, it, it's nice when you do get a return on the investment, of course, but you know the motivation is wanting to help entrepreneurs here in Lincoln um, and help create companies here in Lincoln and in the area. Well, thank you so much. Yes, thank you all. everyone for coming this morning stay around have more coffee um, hang out chat and we invite you back next week for the Tammy Adcock with uh